for a little bit. Here we go. So Roger Waters is in deep doo-doo again, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn the camera for our friends on TikTok. All right, hold on, guys. Flip the camera. Boom. There you go. You can see his his, his face. So y'all can see what we're talking about. Uh, perhaps we will sing. He, uh, okay, so Russia asked Putin apologist Roger Waters to speak on Ukraine weapons at UN. And of course, right off the bat, the way that they are framing this article and this is rolling stones which rolling stones is ugh, they used to be fucking they used to be beautiful man and now they just are ugh. <laughs> same oh you want another woo sticker you got it buddy you got it did i ever send you your other one same oh i can't remember if i even sent you the other one you got it bud i got you perhaps he will sing to us too you know, and I still have to send homie from uh, that reggae band that sent uh, 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 Nader's that that vinyl. I still have to send him his stickers, so I will have. Yeah, you have. I have a place for them. A uh, place for them on my card just yet. No worries, but I'll send you more before they diss Celine. <laughs> well, we all know that Celine's a Satanist, so bon bon. Uh, oh, no worries, Nader's. You got a life to live. I, I'm not here to get in from it. Again, I don't like the way this is framed. Pink Floyd has to be one of my favorite bands ever. And it, it, it's a shame that we've come to the point where we can't even talk about Roger Waters because he's an anti-Semi or he's, you know, a Putin apologist or it's kind of lame. It's kind of lame. But let's go into this article. I haven't read through this article yet, so we'll be reading this together. And then I got this interesting... Uh, <laughs> movie dutchman how dare you you know you love them you know you love pink floyd uh russia has invited pink floyd's roger roger waters who has never held office but has been involved in left field political rants in the past to speak to diplomats at the united nations about the delivery of weapons to ukraine on wednesday so today uh, according to Reuters report, let's see what he will say. He has a position and you will hear it tomorrow, said Russian UN ambassador Vasily Nebla per Reuters. Perhaps he will sing to us too. And that seems kind of rude. Uh, Dmitry, whatever that says, Deputy Permanent Representative of Russian Federation to the United Nations, also confirmed Waters scheduled an appearance writing on Twitter for tomorrow's UN Security Council briefing on prospects of peaceful settlement of crisis uh, around Ukraine in the context of increasing Western arms deliveries to this country. We invited as a briefer famous British musician and rock musician Roger Waters. Um, you know, I think he's talking about de-escalation is what he's saying. Um, and I, there has to be some kind of way of de-escalating this stuff, man. Because this whole Ukraine situation, it, it can't go on like Afghanistan did. But I feel like that's what's going to happen. Um, I, I feel like we got to figure out de-escalation on this stuff, man. Because this is it's getting crazy. Wanders has been under fire by supporters of Ukraine for supporting Russia after he shared a letter written to Re Ukrainian First Lady Olena Zelensky on his website last September. He also recently spoke with a German newspaper shared by Waters on his site where he voiced controversial views on Israel, Putin, and Russia. He also said that he was really, really sad that his former bandmates recorded a protest song with Ukrainian musician, I can't say that, um, which that song kind of sucked. Among those to condemn Waters is his former Pink Floyd bandmate David Gilmore. On Monday, Gilmore t posted a tweet by his wife, Polly Sampson, who wrote several of the band's tracks that denounced Waters' support uh, of Russia. Sadly, at Roger Waters, you are anti-Semitic to your rotten core. 
wrote Samson on Twitter. Also, a Putin apologist and a lying, thieving, hypocritical, tax-avoiding, lip-syncing, misogynic, sick with envy, uh, megalomaniac. Enough of your nonsense. Gilmore quoted the tweet, her post, and wrote, every word demonstrably true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the 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 hate between david gilmore and um and and roger waters is just it, it's just incredible it's just incredible i you know and i guess i don't know too much about it i've definitely looked into roger waters uh, accusations of anti-semitism uh it seems like he supports um Israel not um, schmurdering uh, Palestinians that are in Israeli uh, um, is in Israeli land, um, but I, you know I'm not I don't know too much about this crisis and I can't speak on it, but I can say that I I love Pink Floyd. And I also like that David Gilmore and Roger Waters are um, always feuding. And I can say that um, that uh, I don't think that Roger Waters is an anti-Semite. If he is a megalomaniac, I, I definitely believe that. <laughs> it's sick with envy, maybe. Lip syncing, probably. Uh, tax avoiding, I don't know. <laughs> But it doesn't seem like he hates anybody when you hear him talk. Like, it's not like he's sitting there saying, like, oh, man, I can't stand them Jews. Like, oh, thank you for the rose. Danielle, uh, Danielle Lissack Music, thank you so much for those those roses. I appreciate you on TikTok. Uh, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, so, anyways, let's keep going. Um I'm not trying to, you know, like, I'm not trying to defend Roger Waters by any means, but I am not trying to, um, you know, crap on him because I, I, de I definitely like, again, I like Pink Floyd. And Roger Waters did come out with some decent music after Pink Floyd. Uh, last year's Waters, uh, Waters also spoke with Rolling Stone. Send Roger Waters to Siberia. You want to go to the gulags? <laughs> Movie Dutchman, why do you hate him so much? <laughs> Last year, Waters also spoke with Rolling Stone about being on a kill list that is supported by Ukraine government, which was something that happened. During the interview, Waters suggested that NATO is responsible for Putin's decision to invade Ukraine by positioned, uh, but, but position that his advocating for Palestine is partially rooted in his belief that some Jewish people in the U.S. and the U.K. are responsible for the actions of Israel particularly because they pay for everything. So he did say some shit like that. So he's saying some weird stuff about, you know, the Jewish folks. So, you know, you got to be careful, right? You got to be careful. Um, So they mentioned in an interview that Roger Waters said, Robbie, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> We're... You're always just in time for the controversial stuff. I love coming into weird conversations about Jewish folks. <laughs> Robbie, uh, I appreciate you, my friend. If you guys are wondering who I'm talking to on TikTok, I'm talking to our uh, I'm talking to uh, our Twitch chat. We are live on Twitch as well. So if anybody wants to join our Twitch chat, you can see things a little better and have a better picture of what's going on. Uh, but I appreciate it. it's D it's it's D it's DI buddy. Oh Daniel! Hey, what's up, Daniel? Oh, what's up, man? I had no clue. Sorry, man. I I, I read it Danielle. I'm just like, uh, but Daniel, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate those gifts and stuff. Um, I don't know what that means, but I appreciate you. Uh, Daniel is a fantastic singer songwriter from here in Toledo, Ohio. Um, and I, I played with him before. He's, he's a fantastic musician. I also, uh, got hangry once with Daniel, <laughs> which is kind of uncomfortable to talk about, but yes, Robbie, we are on both. We are on both right now. Um, 
but you got cool pictures with them, I think. I think so. I think you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did. We had some good pictures. No, uh, I was I was being kind of a dick, and I was responding uh, inappropriately, and I was hungry, and and I, I, I constantly feel like such a jerk. No, that doesn't uh, exist. Never happened. All of... <laughs> Daniel, uh, if it's one thing about me, I constantly have to talk about my faults, or else I feel like I'm not learning <laughs> but much love to daniel isaac music and actually let's give daniel some love here on twitch as well uh daniel isaac music let's see if that just comes up uh daniel I, daniel's great voice soulful voice definitely um definitely go check out daniel let's see if we can hear some you know what? What am I doing? Let's go to YouTube. Uh, Daniel. Is that how you spell Daniel? Da no, it's not how you spell Daniel. Isaac. Music. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Top song. Let's check out some Daniel Isaac music, y'all. Uh. Fantastic singer song right here from Toledo, Ohio. You say that it's over, that's okay. I was already leaving anyway. I packed up all my things, I don't wanna stay. I was already leaving anyway. I was already leaving anyway. I was already leaving. If anybody wants to follow Daniel and Instagram, here you go. Yeah, I was already not following you? How am I not following you? Baby girl, I know this love is not the same. It's different. You got me feeling like a part of me is missing. Sounds like the intro to Saucy's channel. You didn't have to do that. Oh, well, I'll, I'm just you know how I am, Daniel. I got well. I guess you don't really. <laughs> Giving you love, man. I I truly appreciate you as an artist. We out here. We out here. We out here. <laughs> we were, I was already leaving anyway. <laughs> I was already on my way out. Yes. Robbie, TikTok can hear. I have the audio rooted, routed through, um, routed through TikTok as well. He has the sound linked. Yes. Let's check out another song. Oh, how's it? Oh. Funk is your friend. Thank you so much for that follow on Twitch. I appreciate you. Yes, I am very fancy. Robbie, TikTok is so wild. Daniel, we still got to get you on the show, buddy. not sure if you saw gifts are like bits oh thank you daniel I, I i was thanking daniel for those gifts and roses and stuff i just don't know how this stuff works anymore okay <laughs> listen, listen i'm neurodivergent i'm always rocking okay don't shame my neurodivergence. You say you love me. You say you love me. First you say you love me, then you don't. You say it's high, but it's 
for the calm down moving Dutchman. I was going back through old episodes of this podcast and it's wild the numbers of listens we get here, especially months earlier, oh, months later. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think your podcast is up to like 13,000 listens or something. Thank you, Bon Bon. Thank you. Moving Dutchman, calm yourself. Well, there you go, guys. Make sure y'all are going and giving Daniel some love. Go follow Daniel. Stay up to date with what he's doing. And maybe one day Daniel will put a band back together and and uh, maybe we'll work together. Who knows? Who freaking knows? Who freaking knows? Anyways, we're going to get back to uh, our, our story here. So uh, Moving Dutchman's favorite musician ever is uh, Roger Waters. That's what he just told us. And the Carly, it was at nine thousand. Wow, that's that's awesome. I I I stopped paying attention to that stuff because it gets me all worked up. Uh, <laughs> call it a band aid. I will, I will call it a band aid. Naders. Okay, so uh, in this article we just read, uh, we were uh, Roger Waters was talking about this uh this german german interview he did in germany moving dutch man uh the germans love him the germans love roger waters uh and so here is the whole thing and since i suck at reading i thought that we'd have the computer read it for us so or we're gonna have an ai bot read it for us a nice female presence so you guys can see it too go ahead and check this out can you oh you can zoom in on this get out of here i didn't know you could zoom in zoom out a little boom we're zooming guys i'm learning tiktok i'm learning call it a band a all right so let's so this is the interview they did in uh with the german press and um it's kind of a long interview, so we might not go through all of it, but we'll definitely be pausing and commenting. So let's get th- let's let's try this. The truth will set us free. Against the backdrop of the outrageous and despicable smear campaign by the Israeli lobby to denounce me as an anti-Semite, which I am not, never have been, and never will be. Against the backdrop of them trying to silence me because I lend my voice to the 75-year-old fight for equal human rights. For all my brothers and sisters in Palestine, Israel, irrespective of their ethnicity, religion, or nationality, <laughs> against the backdrop of the Israeli lobby trying to cancel my 85% sold-out series of concerts in Germany, the national newspaper Berliner Zeitung has today courageously, courageously moving Dadman in their Saturday magazine. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Courageous, moving Dutchman. This is your magazine. Berliner Zeitung. They're courageous. Again, this is the interview that Roger Waters did with the German press. And we're not going to listen to Mike read it because he reads like a a three-year-old. So we're going to listen to this lovely AI bot to read it for us. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And to my fans who have purchased tickets for my forthcoming shows in Europe. Fear not. I am definitely coming. (laughs) Wild horses couldn't keep me away. Moving and Dutchman. neither can this apartheid rabble. <laughs> the truth will set us free. Love. R. Interview translated into English from German. There you go. Roger Waters can rightly claim to be the mastermind behind Pink Floyd. He came up with the concept of and wrote all the lyrics for the masterpiece, The Dark Side of the Moon. He wrote the albums The Animals, The Wall, and The Final Cut, single-handedly. He wrote the... I'm turning. I'm, he wrote the albums, The Animals, The Wall, and The Final Cut, single handedly. Ah! <laughs> Crap. <laughs> All right, guys. Now we're going to have to go figure this out again. Dang it. I like this one. They want me to pay $19 a month. All right, we're going to try this again. Sorry, guys. It must have been Roger Waters. I'm definitely coming. Commercial. 
Uh, Speechify free. I think this one, well, we'll have to go robot voice now, guys. Oh, wait, hold on. We're just gonna have to go robot voice, y'all. Sorry. Oh, is this it? Oh. There we go. Mink shows in Europe. Oh, shit. Click play button to listen to this text. Oh, Jesus. You may edit this text here, or upload a file such as text, PDF, or eBooth Truth will set US free. Against the backdrop of the outrageous and despicable smear campaign by the Israeli lobby to denounce me as an anti-Semite, which I am not, never have been and never will be. Against he backdrop of them trying to silence me because I lend my voice to the 75-year-old fight for equal human rights for all my brothers and sisters in Palestine slash Israel, irrespective of their ethnicity. Uh, ooh, ah, uh, in my gorilla's voice. Uh, ooh, new gorilla's videos just released four hours ago. My son is going to be hype I, when I get home. Oh, nice. Let's go gorillas. I'm sorry that this robot voice sucks, but... Let's see if we can find another text reader. Free. Natural reader. Is this the one we just went to? Yes. These guys aren't free. They lied. All right. Let's see if we... Sorry we're doing this to everyone. Let's see if this one works better. Wait, can it? Oh my God. All right, we're going back to robot voice, everybody. Oh my God, I'm the worst at this. Against he backdrop of them trying to silence me because I lend my voice to the 75 year old fight for equal human rights for all my brothers and sisters in Palestine slash Israel, irrespective of their ethnicity, religion, or nationality. Against the backdrop of the Israeli lobby trying to cancel my 85% sold out series of concerts in Germany, the national newspaper Berliner Zeitung has today, courageously, published an in-depth interview with me in their Saturday magazine. Thank you so much gentlemen. And to my fans who have purchased tickets for my forthcoming shows in Europe. Fear not. I am definitely coming. Wild horses couldn't keep me away. Yeah, I'm and not neither a fan can of this Putin either. Rabble. The truth will set US free. Love. R. Interview translated into English from German. Roger Waters can rightly claim to be the mastermind behind Pink Floyd. He came up with the concept of and wrote all the lyrics for the masterpiece, The Dark Side of the Moon. He wrote the album's Animals, The Wall and The Final Cut, single-handedly. On his current tour, This Is Not a Drill, which comes to Germany in May, he therefore wants to express that legacy to a large extent and play songs from Pink Floyd's classic phase. The problem because of controversial statements he has made about the war in Ukraine and the politics of the state of Israel, one of his concerts in Poland has already been. Hold on, Movie Dutchman is protesting in the Twitch chat. <laughs> hey, Roger, leave those Ukrainian kids alone. I can. Yeah, there you go. It's because you love you love Pink Floyd so much. The problem because of controversial statements he has made about the war in Ukraine and the politics of the state of Israel, one of his concerts in Poland has already been cancelled, and in Germany Jewish and Christian organizations are demanding the same. Time to talk to the 79-year-old oh musician, he's almost 80? what does he mean by all this? Is he simply misunderstood, should his concerts be cancelled? Is it justifiable to exclude him from the conversation? Or does society have a problem banning dissenters like Waters from the conversation? The musician receives his visitors in his residence in southern England, friendly, open, unpretentious, but determined, that's how he will remain throughout the conversation. <laughs> First, however, he wants to demonstrate something special, in the studio of his house, 
He plays three tracks from a brand new re-recording of The Dark Side of the Moon, Why we which celebrates its 50th birthday in Why March. Why are we re-recording that? The new concept is meant to reflect on the meaning of the work, to bring out the heart and soul of the album, he says, musically and spiritually. I'm the only one singing my songs on these new recordings, and there are no rock and roll guitar solos. What the hell? The spoken hold on, hold words. On. Can we just take a moment here? A pause for the cause here. Roger Waters is cutting out all of David Gilmore's. Come on, man. See, now I, I agree with Moving Dutchman here. Let's cancel Roger Waters from going back and taking great pieces of art and shitting on them. Like, come on, man. Don't make me get all Joe Biden on him. Come on, man. Emphasis on the re re. Uh, anyways, I, I don't agree with that. I am not with it, Roger Waters. Do not go back and re-release some crap without... See, that's that's the problem. These these older artists, like they're like, oh, well, I'll go back and just start making new stuff out of old stuff. Just make new stuff. Stop going back. And just... It's like Spielberg going back and changing Indiana Jones or, or changing... Uh, or No, I'm sorry, David Lucas. Lucas Films going back at David Lucas. What the hell is his name? It's like Luke is going back and ruining Star Wars. It's like, just leave it alone. You know, I just learned from Taylor Swift, her sob feels me. That's, that stuff's so funny, though. George Lucas, thank you, Robbie. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, Taylor is mad because of all these companies buying up um, the libraries of people. Moving Dutchman, step into the light, bro. Listen, thank you for that 100 biddies, but I'm still a fan of Pink Floyd. Listen, I didn't say I'm Roger Waters' biggest fan. I'm just interested in what he has to say because he's written some of the greatest music that's ever been created on Earth. So, you know, just, you know. Okay, so we're, we're going back here. The spoken words superimposed on instrumental pieces like On the Run or The Great Gig in the Sky and Over Speak to Me brain damage, any color you like and money, are meant to clarify his mantra, the message he considers central to all his work, it's about the voice of reason. And it says, what is important is not the power of our kings and leaders or their so-called connection with God. What is really important is the connection between us as human beings, the whole human community. We, uh. human beings, are scattered all over the globe, but we are all related because we all come from Africa. We are all brothers and sisters, or at the very least distant cousins, but the way we treat each other is destroying our home, planet Earth, faster than we can imagine. For instance, right now, suddenly here we are in 2023 involved in a year-old proxy war with Russia and Ukraine. That's true. Why? Okay, a bit of history. In 2000... We, we are in a proxy war. Like, America is in a proxy war. But, you know... Thank you for that lurk, buddy. Do your thing. Okay. A bit of history, in 2004 Russian President Vladimir Putin extended his hand to the West in an attempt to build an architecture of peace in Europe. It's all there in the record. I know. He explained that Western plans to invite the post-maiden coup Ukraine into NATO posed a completely unacceptable existential threat to the Russian Federation and would cross a final red line that could end in war, so could we all get round the table and negotiate a peaceful future. His advances were brushed off by the US and its NATO allies. From then on he consistently maintained his position and NATO consistently maintained theirs. F. U. And here we are. Mr. Um, I'm not sure about that 2004 thing, but I know that there has been times where, you know, especially after the Soviet Union, there has been, after the Soviet Union collapsed, there was, uh, what was it, there was ideas uh, that there should be more peace being talked about between these nations, but they were ignored by NATO and America, especially. So, you know, I'm not trying to say Putin's right. War is terrible, and he should have never just thought he could go and invade another country, which is BS. But it is interesting that there has been times where peace was wanted, but was never you know, never followed up with, like there, it was never expo expanded into conversations. It was only just one sided. So taking that into consideration. Mr. Waters, you speak of the voice of reason of the deep connection of all people. But when it comes to the war in Ukraine, you talk a lot about the mistakes of the U S and the West, 
not about Russia's war and the Russian aggression. Why don't you protest against the acts committed by Russia? I know that you supported Pussy Riot and other human rights organizations in Russia. Why don't you attack Putin? First of all, if you read my letter to Putin and my writings around the start of the war in February. You called him a gangster. Exactly, I did. But I may have changed my mind a little bit in the last year. There is a podcast from Cyprus called The Duran. The hosts speak Russian and can read Putin's speeches in the original. Their comments on it make sense to me. The most important reason for supplying arms to Ukraine is surely profit for the arms industry. That's true. Too. And I wonder, is Putin a bigger gangster than Joe Biden and all those in charge of American politics since World War II? I am not so sure. Putin didn't invade Vietnam or Iraq. Did he? There is no doubt. What a foul. No, Putin is definitely a gangster, right? Like, he, not in a good way either. Putin's definitely a gangster, but... Um, it, the but there is something to be said about the war hawks that that exist here in America. Uh, right after we end in Afghanistan, uh, our the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, we pulled out of Afghanistan last year and everything went to hell, right? And there is something to be said about our arms industry here in America that uh, supersede any kind of policy at all times. Like the war hawks who are funding these politicians are, I mean, they're only interested in making money. So of course, if there's something to, if there's money to be made over there, they're going to go for it. Also, let's not forget that the Bidens have ties to Burisma, which is a natural gas company, which there is an exorbitant amount of natural gas underneath Ukraine. And that benefits those in, involved so uh, there is there is motivation for america to continue this proxy war and um i i do see joe biden as a gangster in, in the negative sense russia invaded afghanistan invaded every eastern european under the flag of liberation okay so so did we that's what i'm saying like we're no better we're no better or no worse. We're, we're acting like we're the heroes here. Like America's the heroes coming in to save the day when really it was all just about money. I don't, you know, like I know Russia invaded Afghanistan. They failed. And so did we. It, it, it's the same old story. I'm not saying that Putin is a good guy here. I'm saying that uh, uh, America has <laughs> America. F yeah. I'm saying America has is just as bad and they have a lot to gain. A, a very little amount of people have a lot to gain by going over there and fighting this proxy war. Should we be doing it? Probably. I mean, the people in Ukraine, it, it is sad, but we can also remember that Ukraine was one of is was and is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Human trafficking. Let's not just sit here and act like poor little Ukraine was as all innocent. There's been tons of stuff that they've done. And not saying that they deserve to be invaded by another country. But I am saying that nobody's good in this whole thing. War is ugly and it's disgusting. And I am against it. So Putin invading another country is horrifying to me. And then the fact that we're kind of continuing it without any move, steps forward to trying to de-escalate is disgusting to me because war should be ended immediately as soon as possible. And we are not making any steps towards doing that. And therefore the money that's being made is only keeps, that's what's motivating this is more money. No steps are being made to de-escalate it. I think you are lucky to live in Ohio and not Siberia. Just saying, hell yeah, I am lucky. You think I want to live in Siberia? Hell no. I am very happy that I get to live in America, in Ohio. I am blessed. I enjoy that about my life, that I get to live here in a place where I can speak freely about these sort of things. I get to say these sort of things. And because and, you don't see people in Siberia or Russia being able to talk freely about this stuff. <laughs> America will roundhouse kick Putin in his pooper. You know, I just I'm I'm fully against war. That that's where I stand. Uh, I I I recognize that I have that I have what is that called? 
I rest my case. <sighs> well, you're lucky you get to live in, in, in your little in your little neck of the woods. You know? You 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 have uh what is it called? You're we we both live in tidal lives. There will be collateral collateral damage though. Yes, there will be. And uh I'm just against war in the general. That's all I'm saying. Did he? The most important reason for arms deliveries is the following. It is to support Ukraine, to win the war and to stop Russia's aggression. You seem to see it differently. Yes. Maybe I shouldn't <laughs> be, but I am now more open to listen what Putin actually says. According to independent voices I listen to he governs carefully, making decisions on the grounds of a consensus in the Russian Federation government. There are also critical intellectuals in Russia, who have been arguing against American imperialism since the 1950s. And a central phrase has always been, Ukraine is a red line. It must remain a neutral buffer state. If it doesn't remain so, we don't know where it will lead. We still don't know, but it could end in a third world war. In February last year, it was Putin who decided to attack. He launched what he still calls a special military operation. He launched it on the basis of reasons that if I have understood them well are, 1. We want to stop the potential genocide of the Russian-speaking population of the Donbas. 2. We want to fight Nazism in Ukraine. There is a teenage Ukrainian girl, Alina, with whom I exchanged long letters, I hear you. I understand your pain. She answered me, thanked me, but stressed, I'm sure you're wrong about one thing though. I am 200% certain there are no Nazis in Ukraine. I replied again, I'm sorry Alina, but you are wrong about that. How can you live in Ukraine and not know? There is no evidence that there has been genocide in Ukraine. At the same time, Putin has repeatedly emphasized that he wants to bring Ukraine back into his empire. Putin told former German Chancellor Angela Merkel that the saddest day in his life was in 1989, when the Soviet Union collapsed. Isn't the word origin of Ukraine the Russian word for borderland? It was part of Russia and the Soviet Union for a long time. It's a difficult history. During the Second World War, one believed there was a large part of the population of Western Ukraine that decided to collaborate with the Nazis. They killed Jews, Roma, communists, and anyone else the Third Reich wanted dead. To this day there is the conflict between Western Ukraine, with or without Nazis Alina, and eastern the Donbas, and southern, Crimea, Ukraine and there are many Russian-speaking Ukrainians because it was part of Russia for hundreds of years. Moving Dutchman, thank you for that sub to Funkin... Funk is your friend. I appreciate you, my friend. 196, we are almost there. We are almost there, Moving Dutchman. We are almost there, and I, I got you locked and loaded. I got you locked and loaded ready to go for for that 200 mark and also mighty mighty i don't know if you're still here feel the pressure um at your leisure good sir i would never be like my judgment you better hit that goal right now i'd never say that that'd be that'd be lame but uh mighty mighty i'm also gonna be dropping something for mighty mighty as well because mighty Mighty, i looked at the count this is like up to 360 gifted subs so you know we're gonna we're we're gonna be dropping some good stuff for for our hey mighty mighty thank you for being here still uh, we're gonna be dropping some cool stuff for our VIPs who 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 basically keep this channel afloat. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you both, and we're, we're we're I'm gonna show it. We'll be showing it. How can you solve such a problem? It can't be done by either the Kiev government or the Russians winning. Putin has always stressed that he has no interest in taking over western Ukraine, or invading Poland or any other country across the border. What he is saying is, he wants to protect the Russian-speaking populations in those parts of Ukraine where the Russian-speaking populations feel under threat from the far-right influenced post-maiden coup governments in Kiev. A coup that is widely accepted as having been orchestrated by the US. We have spoken to many Ukrainians who can prove otherwise. The U.S. may have helped support the 2014 protests. But overall, reputable sources and eyewitness accounts suggest that the protests arose from within, through the will of the Ukrainian people. 
I wonder which Ukrainians you have spoken to? I can imagine that some claim that. On the other side of the coin a huge majority of Ukrainians in the Crimea and the Donbass have voted in referenda to rejoin the Russian Federation. In February, you were surprised that Putin attacked Ukraine. How can you be so sure that he will not go further? Your trust in Russia does not seem to have been shattered, despite the bloody Russian war of aggression. How can I be sure that the US will not risk starting a nuclear war with China? They are already provoking the Chinese by interfering in Taiwan. They would love to destroy Russia first. Anyone with an IQ above room temperature understands that, when they read the news, and the Americans admit it. You irritate a lot of people because it always sounds like you are defending Putin. Compared to Biden, I am. The US slash NATO provocations before February 2022 were extreme and very damaging to the interests of all the ordinary people of Europe. You would not boycott Russia? I think it is counterproductive. So here you can start seeing that um, uh, that Roger has really, really drank the Kool-Aid in, in the Russian propaganda that's being put out, right? Um, what sucks is that, you know, obviously I don't know a lot about this. I'm not that smart and I'm not that invested. And um, it does seem like Roger Waters has really gone in one direction, and that's where it gets dangerous. And that's what we've been kind of talking about is like when people kind of go in one direction and just don't want to hear it from the other side. So, I mean, you do see how he has his biases. It, you can really hear it in this, in this, uh, in this interview. Um, anyways, going further. I think it is counterproductive. You live in Europe. How much does the U.S. charge for gas deliveries? five times as much as its own citizens pay. In England, people are now saying eat or heat, because the poorer sections of the population can hardly afford to heat their homes. <laughs> Western governments should <laughs> realize you, that we are all brothers and sisters. In the Second World War they saw what happens when they try to wage war against Russia. They will unite and fight to the last ruble and the last square meter of ground to defend their motherland. Just like anyone would. I think if the US can convince its own citizens and you and many other people that Russia is the real enemy and that Putin is the new Hitler they will have an easier time stealing from the poor to give to the rich and also starting and promoting more wars, like this proxy war in Ukraine. Maybe that seems like an extreme political stance to you, but maybe the history I read and the news I garner is just different from you. You can't believe everything you see on TV or read in the papers. All I am trying to achieve with my new recordings, my statements, and performances is that our brothers and sisters in power stop the war, and that people understand that our brothers and sisters in Russia do not live under a repressive dictatorship. Any more than you do in Germany or I do in the US. I mean would we choose to continue to slaughter young Ukrainians and Russians if we had the power to stop it? We can- Um, I would say that that's not completely true. Um, you cannot be in Russia and talk freely about your, the leaders there. That is not, that is not how it works. <laughs> I mean, we've had Russia, no, we had, yeah, we had Russians on the, we had a Russian on the show and they refused and they were in Poland, 98% fake news. Well, that's the problem, right? Like, how do we know what's real and what's not? I don't, I know what I'm smoking on, but God damn. Uh, the, the, I would say that Russia does live under a repressive regime, it, or oppressive, excuse me, oppressive regime, if you can't even talk about the, 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 the country you live in. If you can't talk freely about the country you live in, I don't, I wouldn't call that a free society. Hey, Eddie Brown Music, what's up, buddy? Uh, good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. We are uh, we are going over the interview that Roger Waters did with a German press. In uh, thank you for that shout out, Raina, uh, about the war in Ukraine and Russia because um, uh, Roger Waters has been invited to go speak for the R Russian uh, Federation at the UN and. Um, the one thing I can agree with here with uh, with 
with Roger Waters is that he wants people to de-escalate. And I think that's a, that's the important part here. I, I Again, I'm completely anti-war. Um, and I can see the point of people defending their homeland because I know if people were invading the United States, I would be, you know, I might be too old to serve now. But it, it would, in my younger days, I know that I would want to be there to... Um, to to protect their homeland or at least protect my family, you know what I mean? It's not it's a very uh it's a very scary thing to think about is someone up in your in your in your space. So, you know, the I can agree with Roger Waters that there's uh the 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 want for people to protect their homeland and also for him to stop war. Like this statement up here it says um I'm trying, all I'm trying to achieve in my new recordings, my statements and performances is that our brothers and sisters in power stop the war and that people understand that our brothers and sisters in Russia do not live under a repressive dictatorship. Now that I don't agree with. It does seem like they live under an oppressive, a repressive dictatorship any more than you do in Germany or I do in the U.S. And I don't think that's true because I think in Germany, you can talk about your leaders (laughs) And the United States, well, I shit on Biden constantly, shit on Trump constantly. It's just what I do. So um, I I don't completely agree with that, but I do agree with the sentiment of stopping and de-escalation. And that's what we should be focused on. But money generate the money generated out of war is 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 very substantial and it's very motivating for the powers that be to keep it going. I haven't named the others yet, but Tommy's got my back. (laughs) Exactly, Naders. Tommy's got your back. I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm looking at these sigs. I'm looking at these sig nines. I like the ones where you can change out the nine to a, a, uh, like interchangeable barrels. That's the one I'm looking at. So you can turn it into a forty-five. Is that what it is? Anyways. <laughs> Moving on. We can do this interview. In Russia, this would not be so easy. But back to Ukraine. What would be your political counter proposal for a meaningful Ukraine policy of the West? Right there, right there. The 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 um the the interviewer called him out on that, which is good. That's a good interviewer. He said we can do this interview in Russia. This would not be so easy. And and he's addressing that idea that they don't live in a repressive regime because they do. You can't tell me. I got a 9 to a 40. Oh, that's sexy. That's sexy. We can do this interview. In Russia, this would not be so easy. But back to Ukraine. What would be your political counter proposal for a meaningful Ukraine policy of the West? British understatement. We need to get all our leaders around the table and force them to say, no more war. Yes. That would be the point where dialogue can start. Yes. Could you imagine living in Russia? Yes, of course. Why not? It would be the same as with my neighbors here in the south of England. I don't know about that. We could go to the pub and talk openly, as long as they don't go to war and kill Americans or Ukrainians. All right. As long as we can trade with each other, sell each other gas, make sure we're warm in the winter, we're fine. Russians are no different from you and me. There are good people and there are idiots, like everywhere else. Then why don't you play shows in Russia? Not for ideological reasons. It is simply not possible at the moment. No. I'm not boycotting Russia, that would be ridiculous. I play 38 shows in the USA. If I were to boycott any country for political reasons, it would be the US. But you know that that's where your big amount of money comes from, Roger Waters. So you wouldn't do that because you know how much money you make on those sold out shows. If I were to boycott any country for political reasons, it would be the U.S. They are the main aggressor. If one looks at the conflict neutrally, one can see Putin as the aggressor. (laughs) Do you think we are all brainwashed? (laughs) Yes, I do indeed, definitely. Brainwashed, you said it. Because we consume Western media? Exactly. What everyone in the West is being told is the unprovoked invasion narrative. Huh? Anyone with half a brain can see that the conflict in Ukraine was provoked beyond all measure. It is probably the most provoked invasion ever. 
When concerts in Poland were cancelled because of your statements on the war in Ukraine, did you just feel misunderstood? Yes. This is a big step backwards. It is an expression of Russophobia. People in Poland are obviously just as susceptible to Western propaganda. I would want to say to them, you are brothers and sisters, get your leaders to stop the war so that we can stop for a moment and think, what is this war about? It is about making the rich in the Western countries even richer and the poor everywhere even poorer. The opposite of Robin Hood. Jeff Bezos has a fortune of around $200 billion, while thousands of people in Washington DC alone live in cardboard boxes on the street. Ukrainians are standing up to defend their country. Most people in Germany see it that way, which is why your statements cause consternation, even anger. Your perspectives on Israel meet with similar criticism here. That is also why there is now a discussion about whether your concerts in Germany should be cancelled. How do you react to that? Uh-oh, how do you react oh, to that, Germans? You know, it's Israeli lobby activists like Malka Goldstein-Wolf who demand that. That's idiotic. They already tried to cancel my concert in Cologne in 2017 and even got the local radio stations to join in. Isn't it a bit easy to label these people as idiots? Of course, they are not. I like this interviewer. He's definitely pushing back in the right ways. And, 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 um, like, like that whole idea is it's easy to just dismiss people as idiots and just move on, right? They're idiots, so whatever. And, and the thing about Roger Waters is he does have this arrogance about him that's just unsettling. I just, ugh, God, it's so this. Of course, they are not all idiots. But they probably read the Bible and probably believe that anyone who speaks out against Israeli fascism in the Holy Land is an anti-Semite. That's really not a smart position to take, because to do so you have to deny that people lived in Palestine before the Israelis settled there. Uh oh, there's You the have problem. to follow the legend that says, a land without a people for a people without a land. What nonsense. The history here is quite clear. To this day, the indigenous, Jewish population is a minority. The Jewish Israelis all immigrated from Eastern Europe or the United States. You once compared the state of Israel to Nazi Germany. Oof. Do you still stand by the... That's a tough one to get past. <laughs> Roger Waters, that's a tough one to get past. Oof. Do you still stand by this comparison? And then, of course, he doubles yes, down. Yes, of course. The Israelis are committing genocide. Just like Great Britain did during our colonial period, by the way. The British committed genocide against the indigenous people of North America, for example. So did the Dutch, the Spanish, the Portuguese even the Germans in their colonies. All were part of the injustice of the colonial era. And we, the British also murdered and pillaged in India, Southeast Asia, China. We believed ourselves to be inherently superior to the indigenous people, just as the Israelis do in Palestine. Well, we weren't and neither are the Israeli Jews. As an English man, you have a very different perspective on the history of the state of Israel than we Germans do. In Germany, criticism of Israel is handled with caution for good reasons, Germany has a historical debt that the country must live up to. <laughs> yeah, you do, Germany. Yeah, you do. Um, yeah, you know, I... I'm not sure what's going on in Israel. I mean, I, I've only read a few things about it, but there is people who... Uh, Roger never read a history book, I think. Only YouTube stuff. <laughs> he did say that he got his ideology off a podcast, which you can't... I mean, you know, we're a podcast here, and, you know, I've listened to a lot of podcasts where I agree, and, and I've adopted some ideologies from podcasts because they're smart people talking, but... I see what you mean. The whole damn world is great. I agree, Eddie. I agree. Um, but I don't know what's going on in Israel. It, it, are Palestine, Palestinian people... I mean, I, I've read... Again, I read and heard that Pal some Palestinians are getting shoved off of their land and their homes being taken away. I'm not sure about the genocide that's going on there. Oof. Roger Waters. Uh, yeah, Eddie, I agree. The world is crazy. I think it always has been. It's just now we can see it on the internet all the time, at all, through all the occasions of life. In Germany, 
criticism of Israel is handled with caution for good reasons, Germany has a historical debt that the country must live up to. I understand that very well and I have been trying to deal with it for 20 years. But for me, your debt, as you put it, your national sense of guilt for what the Nazis did between 1933 and 1945, shouldn't require your whole society to walk around with blinkers on about Israel. Would it not be better if it rather spurred you to throw away all the blinkers and support equal human rights for all your brothers and sisters all over the world irrespective of ethnicity, religion or nationality? Are you questioning Israel's right to exist? <laughs> oh, shit. Um, there is a point there. There is a point to be made there. It's, like, it's the same way with like white guilt, right? Like, Should white guilt put blinders on to reality of what's happening here in the United States? You know what I mean? Um, in certain aspects, uh, there is a point to be made. It's like, you know, your past, your, pa your past mistakes can't define you forever. And it shouldn't, uh, and it shouldn't take away from your judgment of what is right and wrong. Not to say that Roger Waters is right. Okay. I'm not saying that. Um, this idea of white guilt here though in the United States is just, is, is ridiculous. Like we, like white people are just, they owe everyone a debt forever because of what something happened, you know, what happened in the past. I, I think that's ridiculous. Um, but you know, I, I, I do understand. No worries, Eddie. <laughs> it's hot in here. It's hot in here. I, I get it. I get it. Um, you know, not to say that there aren't white people who are terrible, but you got to also understand that, like Roger Waters was saying, it was like every country has had their uh, repressive and genocidal regimes going on. Uh, America, Britain, 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 Europe, Britain, Britain, what? England, uh, Germany, all, all these countries have had done horrible atrocities to each other. Um uh, just like the Africans has sold the Africans in the slave trade. Africans are selling other Africans in the slave trade. It's just like I always say. It's like there are, are good and bad white people. There are good and bad black people. There are good and bad fucking uh, Jewish people. There are good and bad. Every race has their evils and their good people in it. And to think that they don't exist because of something... Um, Germany, the Netherlands, Netherlands, UK, Aztecs. Yeah. Uh, even the Aztecs were eating other tribes. <laughs> the Aztecs, the Mayans, like they were all like doing human sacrifices to other tribes, raiding and murdering and genocidal uh, ideologies on other tribes. The fucking, the, the, the Native Americans that were here, the Native people that were here, they weren't all just living peaceful and smoking peace pipes, man. They were at war. They were doing a lot of that shit. Uh, man, I can't remember the name. What is it? The, the, can't remember their name. I wish my brain worked better. It's just that we gotta remember that people, human beings are human no matter what. And no matter what your color, your ethnicity, your race, you know, like it's, we're all human and we all are, are subjected to human emotions and human, uh, um, actions. We'll be out there murdering each other. As soon as things get wild, uh, as soon as we can blame somebody for the, for the, for the, what's happening to us, TikTok doesn't like fact. I know, I know. TikTok, I'm... <laughs> I'm down to one viewer here on TikTok. We had like 500 viewers on TikTok. And we're back down to two. They're like, I haven't. Uh, but not as stupid as Roger. You're just sticking to it. See, I, I'm not going to call him stupid. I, I definitely think that he's definitely drinking the Kool-Aid of wherever information that he's getting his, from whatever source of information he's getting it from. Um I, I can't confirm or deny what he's saying isn't true or isn't because the amount of misinformation that's on the internet is just I'll say you just disagreed. Uh, I don't no. There's things I agree with and there's things I disagree with. I I can they two things can be two things can exist at once. I know Nader's TikTok is not a fan. <laughs> Are you questioning Israel's right to exist? In my opinion, Israel has a right to exist as long as it is a true democracy, 
as long as no group, religious or ethnic, enjoys more human rights than any other. But unfortunately that is exactly what is happening in Israel and Palestine. The government says that only Jewish people should enjoy certain rights. So it can't be described as democratic. They are very open about it, it's enshrined in Israeli law. There are now many people in Germany, and of course many Jewish people in Israel, who are open to a different narrative about Israel. Twenty years ago, we could not have had a conversation about the state of Israel in which the terms genocide and apartheid were mentioned. Now I would say you can't have that conversation without using those terms, because they accurately describe the reality in the occupied territory. I see that more and more clearly since I've been part of the BDS movement, boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel, ed. Do you think they would agree with you here in England? I can't say for sure because I've hardly lived here for the last 20 years. I would have to go down to the pub and talk to people. But I suspect more and more would agree with me every day. I have many Jewish friends, by the way, who wholeheartedly agree with me, which is one reason why it's so crazy to try to discredit me as a Jew hater. I have one close friend in New York, who happens to be Jewish, who said to me the other day, a few years ago, I thought you were crazy, I thought you had completely lost it. Now I see you were right in your position on the policies of the state of Israel, and we, the Jewish community in the US, were wrong. My friend in New York was clearly distressed making this remark, he is a good man. Wow. He did the whole, he did the whole, um, he did the whole, I have a friend, I have a Jewish friend. <laughs> he did the whole, like, I have a black friend, so I know I'm not anti-Semitic. I know I'm not racist because I have a black friend. <laughs> he did that thing. <laughs> Will be. This isn't Madonna news. No, we're probably not going to make it to Madonna. Uh, this is Roger Waters of Pink Floyd, Wooby, talking to a German press about uh, the controversy that's been he's been stirring up for the f past few years. Uh, so we're instead of listening to me stutter through it, we're listening to uh, Stephen Hawkins read it to us. But how you doing, Wooby? Good to see you. Thanks for stopping in, my friend. I hope you're well. I hope things are good in jolly old England. Jolly old England! Home of peanut butter and jam sandwiches. Uh, Wooby says, uh, he's full of ass. <laughs> Look, you were moving Dutchman. Well, you have to take that into perspective. Jews are kicked out and killed for centuries. They full, uh, they finally have a country. Yes, blame them that they are overprotecting their country. Okay, all right, fair enough, but does that give them the right, if this is true, of course, does that give them the right to uh, mistreat other people who happen to live in the country as well, who they allow to live in the country? Does that give them the right to mistreat people, if that is true? I don't know if that's true. Um, I whispered you the mod to Kenny Street. Oh, thank you very much, Naders. I really appreciate that. Um, it, it looks like, it looks like Moving Dutchman, you have a, you have a partner here. Wooby is, uh, <laughs> Wooby's got your back. Wooby, Wooby doesn't like Roger either. Listen, I think Roger is a pompous asshole, but his music is incredible. Music is, oh, you sent it to Raina. Okay. I, I can't read. I can't read. All right, let's continue this. This is getting juicy, guys. Now I see you were right in your position on the policies of the state of Israel. His one we, Jewish friend the Jewish agreed community with him. in the U.S., were wrong. My friend in New York <laughs> was clearly distressed making this remark. He is a good man. BDS <laughs> positions are sanctioned by the German Bundestag. A success of the BDS movement could ultimately mean an end to the state of Israel. Do you see it differently? Yes, Israel could change its laws. They could say... We have changed our mind, people are allowed to have rights even if they are not Jewish. That would be it, then we wouldn't need BDS anymore. Have you lost friends because you are active for BDS? It's interesting that you ask that. I don't know exactly, but I very much doubt it. A friendship is a powerful thing. I would say I've had about 10 real friends in my life. I couldn't lose a friend because of my political views, because friends love each other and friendship begets talk, and talk begets understanding. If a friend were to say, Roger, 
I saw you flew an inflatable pig with a Star of David on it during your wall concerts. I explained to them the context and that there was nothing anti-Semitic either intended or expressed. What is the context then? Right? It was during the song, <laughs> Goodbye Blue Sky, Can in we the get wall some show. Context? And to explain the context, you see B-52 bombers, on a circular screen behind the band, but they don't drop bombs, they drop symbols, dollar signs, crucifixes, hammer... <laughs> Why are we wittering on about BDSM? That's not what he's saying. He's talking about BDSM. Morby, we were just talking about how we missed you. Welcome back. Hello, my friend. We are. We were just saying how we missed Morby. Morbs is here. We are talking about Roger Waters' interview he did with a German press, and um, I'm 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 gonna go ahead and say it's not. There's not a whole lot of support for Roger in this in this chat. Uh, I'm not I'm not supporting Roger either because obviously he's taken such a strong stance, and um, I'm not sure if there's nuance in the way he views things. But I can understand if these these accusations are true. I can understand how Roger feels this way, and how and why, and some people do feel the way that they do about the state of Israel. I don't know anything about Israel really. Um, I have some Jewish friends. And they've gone to Israel, but that's about all I know about it. So I don't know. I saw some stickers in my city again. There were stickers. <laughs> There's stickers against Roger Waters. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this camera on TikTok, guys. I'm gonna turn it back around since we have one person hanging out. I'm gonna flip the camera on me, and uh, we'll just listen to the thing together. Yeah, he's supposed to make a concert. Yeah, and I think they're talking about that here too. Um, and I think there, and I think there's a lot of people not feeling it because of his ideas that that he's talking about in this interview right now. So we're gonna listen uh, some more to this. And Morby, it's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I hope everything's going good in your world. The absolute state of Israel will be, will be. I hope you're well, my friend. I hope you guys are all doing good. I hope you had a great, I hope your, your hump day is going great. I hope everyone's humping today. I hope everybody humps today. And to explain the context, you see B-52 bombers on a circular screen behind the band, but they don't drop bombs. They drop symbols, dollar signs, crucifixes, hammer and sickles, star and crescents, the McDonald's sign <laughs> and star of David's. This is theatrical satire an expression of my belief that unleashing these ideologies, or products onto the people on the ground, is an act of aggression, the opposite of humane, the opposite of creating love and peace among us brothers and sisters. I'm saying in the wrong hands all the ideologies these symbols represent can be evil. What is your ideology? Are you an anarchist, against any kind of power that people exercise over each other? I call- <laughs> Are you an anarchist? could be you never know there's a lot of anarchy going on these days uh my i missed you too but with the uh driving lessons first thing in the morning going on the job yeah i understand morby i appreciate you uh pushing through and coming by and saying hi i call myself a humanist a citizen of the world and my loyalty and respect belong to all people, regardless of their origin, nationality, or religion. Would you still perform in Israel today if they let you? No, of course not. Wow. That would be crossing the picket line. I have for years written letters. <laughs> Anarchy or McDonald's? That's a tough choice. Yeah, yeah, but we, we, gotta, we, we gotta pick a side. Pick a side. Das Auto Firm I'll be. Das Auto Fur. Uh, thanks for the last. I gotta go. Much love. Naders, thank you for stopping by. Uh, I appreciate you, my friend. I'll see you next time. We'll be back on Friday with uh, with an amazing guest. So uh, I'm looking forward to an Adrian Dunn guest. All right. I have for years written letters to colleagues in the music industry to try to convince them not to perform in Israel. Sometimes they disagree. They See, now that's rude. That's rude. I, I, why is he like actively going out and trying to ruin the Israel the Israelis' good time? Come on, man. 
Sometimes they disagree, they say, but this is a way to make peace, we should go there and try to convince them to make peace, well we are all entitled to our opinion, but in 2005 the whole of Palestinian civil society asked me to observe a cultural boycott. And who am I to tell a whole society living under a brutal occupation that I know better than they? It is very provocative to say that you would play in Moscow but not in Israel. Interesting that you say that given that Moscow does not run an apartheid state based on the genocide of the indigenous inhabitants. Oof. In Russia, oh ethnic minorities God. are heavily discriminated against. Oh, shit. <laughs> Roger Waters coming in with those fucking heavy statements. Good God. <laughs> this is recent. Wooby, this is like this is like as in the last month. This is a very recent interview that he posted on his uh, website with a German thing. Goof two oh nine, welcome in. Those are some hot takes. Uh, <laughs> those hot takes, those Roger Water hot takes coming in. Woo, that is rough. That's rough. In Russia, ethnic minorities are heavily discriminated against, among other things. More ethnic non-Russians are sent to war than ethnic Russians. You seem to be asking me to see Russia from the current Russophobic perspective. I choose to see it differently, though as I have said I don't speak Russian or live in Russia so I'm on foreign ground. How do you like the fact that Pink Floyd have recorded a new piece for the first time in 30 years, with the Ukrainian musician Andrzej Kleinjuk? I have seen the video and I am not surprised, but I find it really, really sad. It's so alien to me, this action is so lacking in humanity. It encourages the continuation of the war. Pink Floyd is a name I used to be associated with. That was a huge time in my life, a very big deal. To associate that name now with something like this, proxy war makes me sad. I mean, they haven't made the point of demanding, stop the war, stop the slaughter, bring our leaders together to talk. It's just this content less waving of the blue and yellow flag. I wrote in one of my letters to the Ukrainian teenager Alina, I will not raise a flag in this conflict, not a Ukrainian flag, not a Russian flag, not a US flag. After the fall of the wall. Um, yeah. And that's what's sad about it too, is that, I mean, see, again, I, I agree with the sentiment of ending the war. Like, I think that's the most important thing that we should be concentrating on. I'm going to need more context. Um, we've played the video, I think here before it was the Pink Floyd video, um, Floyd, um, Ukraine song. <laughs> song. Uh, yeah. Pink Floyd unites Ukraine protest song. Hey, hey, rise up. That's what it's called. Uh, we can't really. It they made a song around this guy singing. Now they were one of the biggest rock bands of all time, selling millions of records and selling out stadiums right across the world. Members of Pink Floyd have just released their first new music together in almost three decades, and it's to raise money for the people of Ukraine. Hey, hey, rise up is the song featuring Dave Gilmore, Nick Mason, with vocals from Ukrainian singer Andrei Kluvnyuk of the band Boombox. Matt Everett has more. Matt Everett has more. Where does this story start? Because this track's happened quite quickly, but the kind of genesis of it goes back a little bit, doesn't it? Basically, the start of it is... So if you can't see this on TikTok, guys, uh, David Gilmore is talking to a BBC reporter about their latest song, Hey, Hey, Rise Up. Someone showing me um, an Instagram feed from this uh, singer called Andrei Kluvnik, who's of a uh, Ukrainian band Boombox. And he um, is in a square in Kiev wearing military fatigues and carrying a gun. And he just burst into this song. <laughs> okay, baby. With all the Ukraine stuff going on, it just, just struck me that as it's a cappella, one can turn this into something lovely, a beautiful song. By coincidence, 
um, the band Boombox that this guy is a singer from. Um, we played um, a, benefit, a benefit concert for in 2015. So there is a little context for you, Morby, about the song that they're talking about. And we uh, we need to get this show on the road here. So we're almost done with this. So we'll we'll play the rest of this and then uh, we're going to end. After the fall of the wall. And no, there is not a viral dance that goes with it. <laughs> um, I... But but doesn't that seem, though, I mean, if everyone laid down their, I feel like if there was a way to bring people to peace, shouldn't we be pursuing it rather than like it has to be one way or the other? Shouldn't we just try to find what works for everybody? That That's what I'm saying. This interview is longer than one of his albums. <laughs> it is long. It is long. After the fall of the wall, you performed the wall in reunified Berlin certainly with optimistic expectations for the future. Did you think you could also contribute to this future with your own art, make a difference? Of course, I believe that to this day. If you have political principles and are an artist, then the two areas are inextricably intertwined. That's one reason why I left Pink Floyd, by the way, I had those principles, the others either did not or had different ones. Do you now see yourself as equal parts musician and political activist? Yes, sometimes I lean towards one, sometimes the other. Will your current tour really be your last tour? Chuckles, I have no idea. The tour is subtitled, The First Farewell Tour, and that's an obvious joke because old rock stars routinely use farewell tour as a selling tool. Then they sometimes retire and sometimes go on another final farewell tour, it's all good. <laughs> you want to keep sending something out to the world, make a difference. I love good music. I love good literature, especially English and Russian, also German. That's why I like the idea of people noticing and understanding what I do. Then why don't you hold back with political statements? Oof. Because I am who I am. If I wasn't this person who has strong political convictions, I wouldn't have written The Dark Side of the Moon, The Wall, Wish You Were Here, Amused to Death, and all the other stuff. Thank you very much for the interview, K. Well, there it is, guys. Um, yeah, that that's a lot to think about. I mean, going through and sort of analyze what he's saying, it does put him a, I am what I am. Uh, it does put a lot of stuff in perspective about how Roger Water thinks. I've seen lots of interviews with him. And again, I, I think he's a pompous prick, but he... Uh, you know, I, I don't agree with everything he's saying, but I don't disagree with everything he's saying. I, I definitely think that we should be finding a way forward. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I, I don't agree with Russia invading Ukraine. And we should be trying to figure out our world leaders should be trying their best to Rush. figure out how to end this war in, in a way where the least amount of casualties are involved. And, and that's how we should go forward. Uh, I don't think that our the America's military industrial complex is I don't think that's what they their intentions in life. I don't think that that's what they want. I think they want a prolonged war. And there's a lot in the propaganda it sounds like it. Seal mission to kill Putin. <laughs> I thought he was dying anyways. Anyways, this was nice and divisive. <laughs> <laughs> this definitely knocked our TikTok views down, which whatever. Uh, uh, thank you guys for on TikTok for hanging out with us. Uh, and uh, thank you guys for uh, sticking with us. I, I, I always appreciate you 